we're at the phase of the pandemic now where people who were shaming others for not wearing masks are no longer wearing masks, right? Because they feel like they had their off ramp, their 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 escape, uh, whatever. They they got out because they got their vaccine and they did the right thing and they feel virtuous about that and now they're done and they can yeah. just move on, right? Yeah. So there's this thing where like ideology plays a really big part in it where people at the very beginning felt like they never had to participate in it because it didn't, it, it wasn't real. It was this, you know, mass conspiracy or whatever to like subjugate the population or whatever. Yeah. And then you have kind of this other ideology, which is like, no, I'm going to do the things required because I believe in the science. And then now that I've taken the vaccine, I've done my social duties up to this point and now yep. I've reached the end and I can move on. And yep. There's this other perspective that I think I have, and I imagine you do as well, I mean, and, some, and many others too. I mean, I know them, and they're like, this is a global, this is an ecological, the pandemic is ecological. That's right. This is not just a weird fluke event of something that happened in some far off place we've never been to and never will go to. We don't understand anything about what wet markets are. We don't understand anything no, about don't. what Wuhan is. We don't understand nope. anything about the Chinese people and their experience. Nope. Um, we know nothing. We project yeah. a bunch of bullshit onto it. Yep. And then that that happened, and that's over now, and we can move on, and we're in this new phase, and we can stop. It, it's, but to me, all of this feels like blinders. To it, at the core, it has to be about death. Yes. Something about it yes. has to be about death and like confronting your vulnerabilities, your mortalities. Like, I think one of the things now, like at the beginning of the pandemic, it was about. Oh, these people, there's a lot of people that are going to die. And there are people still dying, a lot of people. I've noticed the shift now because now we've been in it over two years. People that have gotten COVID at least once, sometimes more, they're experiencing long-term disability as a result of it. Yep. Where now people are confronting the realities of what does it look like when a quarter of this country's population cannot go to work because they're disabled? Yep. Yep. Um, what does that mean for me as a person who is considered able-bodied and like I've always been able to just do what I want to do. I can walk. I have, you know, all all my senses are intact. Everything is like fine. Yeah. And all of a sudden I can't get out of fucking bed. Yeah. I have heart issues. Yeah. I have organ failures. You know, I, mm -hmm. I can't remember shit anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, I think there is this confrontation with disability. That part. That's a huge thing. And yeah. I think that makes people even more uncomfortable than dealing with death itself. Death is like a finality. Yeah. Disability is a, like, you're going to be with that for the rest of your life, however long that is. Yeah. Um, it makes people feel incredibly vulnerable knowing that yeah. something could, like, that they feel entitled to can be taken away. I mean, how many times do you hear people say, oh, if I was paralyzed, just kill me? Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> I'm just like, really? I don't think you would amazing. actually want that if that really came to it, you know? Um, it's interesting. Yeah. It's a, to say the least that I think that that's what's on people's minds now more than anything about, um, regarding the pandemic. Um, and I Absolutely. think, I, and I'm wondering what that, what that means, like that people are now, um, confronting mortality in that way, you know? Right. Yeah. I don't, I, I feel like we're just really low skilled, um, culturally and it's really clear you know, that if you don't sort of get with the program and you don't, you know, make your body into a machine that, you, that, that then you don't actually have any purpose and you get to die in the street. And there's mm -hmm. evidence of that, like more and more and more. And it's wild to me here in Portland, Oregon, in the lands of the Chinook and many others, um, there's been an absolute explosion in, in houselessness, you know, and yep. the way even people that I would consider friends, colleagues, you know, fellow musicians and other people that are, are angry about it. Like not angry that it, it is occurring, but angry that they have to see it. Like <laughs> being like RIP Portland. It's, this is disgusting. I, my children should not have to walk past someone you know, peeing in public or, you know, yeah. using, you know, using drugs in public, um, like mad about the trash, mad about the aesthetics of it, as opposed to sort of being like, wow, this is actually the, 
the natural outcome of something that we have to look at in terms of view, like how we actually understand ourselves, how we understand reality is so deeply hyper individualistic mm -hmm. and um, so much internalized system, so much where we bought into all this weird social contract stuff of like, no one should ever have to watch their child die. No one should ever have to, um, you know, become disabled. It's like deeply sort of insulting in some way mm -hmm. um, to my, like there's all these things that we sort of feel entitled to over here um, that really make the system super brittle because it's yeah. all, it's all predicated on like, you don't you don't want to have to depend on anyone else and and like the the hard pill to swallow around some of that is that community is actually really kind of hard yeah <laughs> you know like it's actually it can actually kind of suck like a lot because everybody kind of knows everybody they know like real like so many you know white folks that are just like in such a grief response around the village and like the Mm -hmm. You know, all the, the 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 grief work around that, which is just like I'm I'm a little uh, I'm a little exhausted by like I, I I've spent some yeah. years you know yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of looking at that stuff and I'm like wow we're gonna keep crying about this like there's something <laughs> on like the other side yeah. of this can we mm -hmm. wrap it up folks you know mm -hmm. um with the like relentless uh attending workshops for magical crybabies like Jesus like let's move on to like how do what are we going to do here and really looking at how did it get like this like I just don't think we can get out of it until we're like well, how did we get like this and it and it I keep coming back to the root of of death and dying and death phobia um and the and the sort of constitutional inability for togetherness real real togetherness that takes a toll on you, on you somatically. I mean, I spent some time in, in Western Africa, spent some, a month there last year. Um, I have family that live there and we were out in like out in the village, you know, like fully in the village, everyone's eating out of the same bowl, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, you, you walk in, you walk into someone's house, there's like a gathering, there's like people that they sleep in shifts, you sleep with like whoever cousins, like, mm -hmm. you don't, there's no boundaries, there's no, you know, <laughs> personal space, like, mm -hmm. it's fucking loud as, like, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a somatic onslaught, everybody gossips, everybody knows everybody's business, everybody knows why you're messed up, because they knew you from birth. Right. Mm -hmm. No one is houseless because that is like the deepest shame to mm -hmm. allow somebody to be to be houseless. You roll in, they hand you a baby. I'm just like, what? Like, OK, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> all right. You're like, you're here, white lady. We're going to like, you know, you, you're going to put you to work. Like, you're going to. Yeah. You yeah. want. Oh, you think you want a village? Huh? You think yeah. you want that? And at the end of the day, I would just go and like be in a dark room, you know, scrolling my phone and be like, never have I felt so white. Like, yeah. I really, community sucks until you need it. Yeah. That's kind of the hard truth about it. It's not like, I think a lot of people are talking about utopia and they're talking about land grabs and they're talking about like, I want to, you know, do a cultural seed bank for the future or whatever. And I'm like, that's a, that's a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> but like actual village making is, 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 so antithetical to just like even the white western soma like even just in the body um it, it's it, it it's you rapidly go over a threshold because it's just not what we're all trained to do which is to elbow your way to the front increase your purchase power and so then you don't need anyone mm -hmm. and if you need someone if you are needy and you're disabled and you need that's on you like that's like a violation of a social contract in which you're weak because everything is predicated on competence and rewards. Like mm -hmm. you don't get to just be because you're a human being. Like you only get to be if you perform, you do competence, you do get a job. Like, I mean, I'm going through it with my own kids. I have one kid that's super mapped on extreme competence, extreme perfectionism, 
you know, and is just like, I want to be the valedictorian. I want to have like, all, and, and talking about the valedictorian in her school and she's goals. And I'm like, hun, I guarantee that girl has an anxiety disorder, probably an eating disorder. Mm-hmm. Like just saying, you know, and yeah, like, yeah. it doesn't, doesn't go real well when I say that. <laughs> and then I have the other kid that's like super not into school and is just like, oh, I have to go back to school. And I'm like, what do you, what's the hardest part? And she's like, I just feel like they're just training us to like get jobs. And I'm like, bingo, nailed it, mm-hmm. nailed it you mm-hmm. know, it's hard. It's hard to be like not bought into it all. And certainly like talking about death and dying, even though like it's so in our face, like there's all this like stuff around, oh, let's have a death cafe and everybody can go and talk about death. And we like set it up and it's this, you know, this hours and this night. And it's like, dude, dude, in a pandemic, every cafe is a death cafe. <laughs> you know yeah, saying? death is fucking everywhere right now. Like, you don't that. need to go to a designated place to do that anymore. It's like, <laughs> literally, you go to work and you you could get a fucking virus that'll disable and kill you. Like, that's, that's normal now. Like, Thank you. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's, yeah. yes. I understand. I, I kind of, I, I wanted to circle back to this just because I think, um, I think in our conversations, uh, it was brought up as a as a, as a piece, uh, something that could be brought up as a discussion piece, but um, around the um, kind of death doula industrial complex type thing, like this idea. You're talking about these these um, largely white people in the global north who are grieving around the loss of the commons. Really, is what they're grieving: the loss of the commons, the things that are commonly shared, and there is all these workshops around it. People want to have like a structured thing that you know can make some money you know that it just says how just so happens to make money for some people um yeah there is this uh um commodification of loss a commodification of yep. what is perceived as grief yep those experiences and those feelings and and all of that is real but how is being channeled by whatever you know the sense of like grind culture or like capitalism or whatever the fuck it is now yeah it's like every this is what to me can feel debilitating um is like every kind of effort that is made to create spaces that feel outside of all of this gets subsumed in the logic of it at some yes. point or another. It's like oh, how sure. many people have sold out with good intentions at the beginning and then inevitably it turns into this sort of oh, business. Yeah. Well, practice, you got to go you know? on your book. You got to go on your book tour. Right. You know, mm-hmm. so you got to like, you know, you got to like fill the seats. And I mean, I just saw a post from Gary Zukov, right? Who's like, you know, one of these like sort of fathers of personal development or something, his wife died. Mm. And it's the post telling the world that his wife died. And then at the end, it was like, and soon this will be a program in order we will, we will, you know, alchemize like this grief into a program for you to become more powerful. And I'm like, is she in the ground yet? Dude, dude? Like, what you're the not, fuck, like, man? Right? Like, but that's like, and people are like so inspiring. I'm like, no. really? like I'm on, I, I don't know. I also, I also really feel that like back to view, you know, if we don't really agree on some foundational things about what humans are, which are like compound critters, like we're super compound. We have like all these kind of elements that some are seen, some are unseen. Mm-hmm. You don't think ghosts are real, you know, in, in not in a like Victorian, you know, Edwardian, like yeah, yeah. Ouija board, the veil is thin, which like nobody ever actually believed it. Just people like the veils then and stuff, you know, it's all <laughs> super spooky and supernatural. And she like, mm-hmm. not that flavor, but the idea that there's like epigenetic information that comes through, you know, and and replicates inside of systems that become egregoric and have lives of their own. Mm-hmm. Like if nobody like you say you can't just say that out loud like, to people. <laughs> They're like the what, you know, but that's actually what's up. And what ends up happening, I think, with all the grief and the and the the workshopiness of it and the sort of certification of it and stuff is like there's a lot of like white people that are actually really neurobiologically addicted to sadness. Sure. You know, and it's like, you're sort of hitting yourself with a hammer so that it feels good when you stop. And that's like what a lot of the 
the sort of the workshoppy things are about. Mm. It's all it's just this like garment rending like story of loss, story of loss, story of loss. And like, you know, like Dare Sohe says, you know, the only thing we have to lose is loss itself. And sort of really looking at like, how did we come to generate these stories in response to the actual natural phenomena where like for, you know, a good half a million years, you get eaten by a tiger, like as like, you know, or, or like, I mean, like saber tooth, mm-hmm. like giant t- freaking animals and, you know, and humans basically ex- made the megafauna go extinct. And like, there's this sort of yeah. piece where humans do this collapsy kind of behavior. Mm-hmm. And then there's all this cultural tech to kind of, to mitigate that. And it has everything to do with death and has everything to do with how we generate story as a neurobiological mitigation technique that then becomes myths and becomes like whatever, all Mm -hmm. these things that we believe to be true. Um, So that's, that's kind of where I have to like, I'm just in the very beginning. Like, I don't think I'll ever understand this stuff. I'm just like, I want to know why it got like this. I'm not out here going, Oh, I know what to do about it. The hell I know. I Mm. I know nothing. I'm just like, how's the squash patch today? Like, you (laughs) know, just barely sort of like my mental health isn't great. You know, I'm not like out here, like knowing how to be powerful. And, you know, I don't, that's not what I'm selling. Like I, I'm, I don't, if you don't have, you know, a a non-dual kind of decolonial animistic view on stuff, then I think it'll replicate. It'll do exactly what you said, where it just gets subsumed because you can't, there's not enough ayahuasca in the world. You know, there's not enough like, dialectical behavioral therapy or like whatever things mm-hmm. that people are into they're not like we we can't if we don't deal with the sort of the power that like n- that power has mm-hmm. on the neurobiology of modern humans like at this point no modern human is really safe and we keep demanding safety yeah it's yeah. not that's not what's up yeah. you don't you don't get safety right now you know, and that's a hard mm-hmm. pill. Yeah, it's hard for it. Doesn't matter who it is. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm yeah, yeah. I I seek safety constantly. You know, Me too. um, and uh, I can compartmentalize the the difficulties um, or the stresses of life in an unhealthy way. So I put it over here, but it's still there, and it's gonna come in. You know, and I try my best to to manage that. But sometimes there's an unhealthy relationship with that and um you know it could be very challenging to kind of address just yeah just we're not safe like and it's getting worse <laughs> you know it's like the inevitability yeah. of climate collapse is that it's gonna get yeah. worse yeah these are so, maybe the good old days yeah it's kind of wild like, what you know like yeah. i can still like doordash my ramen and you sure, know like yeah. i can still like move freely and maybe take a trip if if I really wanted to. Mm-hmm. And I have mixed feelings about doing all of that, all of those things. And, and there's a part of me that's like, this is maybe the time. Like if you mm-hmm. want to do a big trip, I mean, there's, there's ethical questions around getting on airplanes at all at this point for sure, but for sure, for sure um, especially for tourism and things like that. Um, and, you know, like, I don't know. Like I, 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 I'm, I'm in this time. Like, I don't know why I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know where we're all going. It's like we come from the unknown and we're just careening headlong into the unknown. Mm-hmm. And I, I I'm hoping that I can figure out how to, um, you know, do less harm um, on, on the way. And it really feels like just being alive as a Western person is like, so harmful (laughs) you know and I don't want to just kind of um lament that in in an ongoing way there's something that feels really good and very narcissistic about being such a piece of shit yeah you know and I'm I'm a little like how how can we be a little less dualistic about that Mm -hmm. you know a little less heroes and villains about about all the things and Mm -hmm. For me, it, I do practices around dream work and particularly around Taoist dream work, which is just, you know, ancient animism, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, because 
because the Chinese have been writing things, because it was one of the places where writing was invented, there's just such a tremendous amount of scholarship around right. all of the stuff that um, that we don't that that we don't actually have access to in European lineages. So there's just much more oral tradition, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. things were wiped out, and all this stuff. Right. So, um, if you want to get into, you know, view, and you want to get into like how we got like this, it's you can't really ignore like half a hemisphere's worth of wisdom (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) you know right so that's kind of where i'm like all right so we're gonna do this dreaming practice where like every night you practice dying you Mm. know and like my my teacher in the Taoist dreaming course that i'm in um uh, was saying like it's funny how we all love to go to sleep but none of us want to die and they're not that different actually like you you know you yeah. become immobile. It's dark. You leave your body every night <laughs> and, and like have all these other like experiences. And, and and then we just wake up and we go, oh, well, that's weird. You know, like we're not going to talk about that at all. Like, really? Yeah. Um, and it's a nightly thing that can be done. And there's practices that go with it that then can actually prepare you um, for the moment mm-hmm. of death, for your death. Um, and it's absolutely wild to me to think that we're all going to get there. <laughs> 